Good morning. Uh, welcome again to Mr. Brown's Bionic Bible. Uh, entry four. And if you've watched the previous clip, um, I talked briefly about the exclusivity of some of the things Jesus Christ claimed. For instance, being the Son of God and being the only way to God. Um, so I'd like to talk a bit about that, a tag onto that. Um, you hear people saying, you know, there's different faiths, different religions. Um, um, they don't need to get to God through Jesus. Um, the problem is, if Jesus Christ is the Son of God as he claims to be, um, I don't know of any other figure in history who lived the life that Jesus did. Um, he performed miracles, you know, which backed up what he said, what he claimed, you know, to be uh, the Son of God. And he healed people, you know, cast out demons. That's a lot of fun. Um, more significantly, I don't know any other historical figure who laid down his life for me. I don't know of anybody else, any other religious figure who's laid down his or her life for my sin. I don't know anyone else except Jesus Christ who was crucified for the sins of the world. On top of that, I don't know anyone else who God raised from the dead. You know. Um, apparently at one point God had vindicated his son in a manner, or at least affirmed him and said, this is my son. Listen to him. Um, so there's an issue here, and I'd like to to um, give an analogy of what it might be like f if we seem to think we can have access to God without Jesus Christ. Okay. So if God is the Father. And if Jesus is the Son, um, let's have a look at, say, your neighbor's house, okay? Say there's the dad and, and there's a, a boy there who lives there. And you don't really like the boy, but you like the dad. You really admire him. And, you know, you see him on the street or, you know, outside his house and you like to talk to him and, you know, you... Um, you enjoy having a relationship with him, but you you don't like his son. He's he's ugly or something, you know, or he annoys you, or he's too perfect, or or something. It would be entirely inappropriate for you to waltz into that home and say hi to the dad, but completely walk past and ignore his son. A, that's hurtful to the boy, but B, that's hurtful to the father because that's his son. He loves his son. He's proud of his son, if he's a good dad. And his heart wants you to get to know his son and become friends. That's the way into the father's home, is by developing a relationship with his the son. Um... So, put yourself in that situation. How would you feel, how would I feel, if there was a neighborhood kid or neighborhood kids, a whole bunch of neighborhood kids, who all looked up to and, and admired and respected your dad and felt that they had the right to waltz into your home and pal around with your dad and completely ignore you? You know, them, what gives them the right to sit in your kitchen and eat your food and uh, wrestle with your dad while they're ignoring you or, or, or being mean to you or insulting you. That's absolutely inappropriate and totally unacceptable. And it just, it just doesn't make sense. It would be very hurtful to you, wouldn't it? So it's the same with, with Jesus Christ. I would suggest it's completely inappropriate for us to think 
that we have the right to waltz into God's family or into his home, to his kingdom and say, Hey, how's it going? It's me again, da 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 Jesus who? Oh, I, you know, I don't really like him, you know. Uh, doesn't make sense, doesn't work, it's not right. God's heart is that he's proud of his son and has demonstrated his love for you and I in, in giving him, giving us his son to be crucified for our sin. So he wants us to get to know Jesus um, and then we're not just welcome into God the Father's home as neighborhood children but we're actually, he actually adopts us into his family. Jesus Christ becomes our brother, not just the neighborhood, uh, the neighborhood boy. Um, so yes, we get adopted into God's family. And that is a more realistic picture of acceptance and family and unity and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, there's a scripture here in Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 to about 7 and I'll skip a few lines it says essentially this but when the right time came God sent his son God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves so that he could adopt us as his very own children And now you can call God your dear father. You are no longer a slave, but God's own child. So brilliant. We don't have to try to sneak into his home and pal around with, with the neighborhood dad. We, we, he now becomes our father. We become his children. And that, that's a level of intimacy that goes beyond just walking into the neighbor's home and, and saying hello to the father we become his son or daughter and he becomes our father so i hope that is helpful bless you guys bye bye thanks for listening see ya